Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. I am so glad that you're here. Today's video is my February wrap up. I have all of my physical books right here. Do they not look so cute right now? I actually took this picture. I'll post it right here so you guys can see it with all of my like pink drinks and I have a pink book on top, which is going to be the first book that we talk about. Is that not like the cutest thing you've ever seen? Also, don't look at my hair in this video. I don't know what to do. I literally redid it like five billion times and my bangs like I literally just want to cut them off at this point because I cannot figure out what to do with them. <laughs> Yay. Also speaking of the pink drinks and stuff like that, is this not the cutest cup ever? I have a little Alani in here. I got those like little powder packs and I only use half because I just do not respond to caffeine very well. It actually tastes really good. It tastes perfect and I love it. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the stats, shall we? I think this is my best reading month to date. I'm not exactly 100% sure, but I ended up reading 10 books this month. And I know that's not like a crazy amount, but that's a lot for me. Okay, I'm gonna take my wins, all right? Also, mini disclaimer, it literally doesn't matter how many books you read a month, just as long as you're enjoying the books you read. Okay, moving on. Three books were audiobook, seven were physical copy. Out of the 10 books that I read this month, I read seven romances, two mystery slash thrillers, and then one fantasy, which is honestly really unlike me. Although it is the month of February, so maybe I was just in the lovey-dovey spirit, who knows? But normally I am more of a fantasy girly. I guess I'm just in my romance era right now. I don't know, I've just been really loving a romance. Those are all the stats that I really have to talk about. Let me know if you guys want any other stats at the beginning of these videos, because I wanted to start adding them just because I think it's kind of fun. I've seen a few other creators start doing it recently. I just think it's really interesting to see like how many books of each genre and how many pages, all that kind of stuff. Maybe I should have totaled that up. We'll do that next month for sure, promise. But let me know if you guys have any other ideas. Anyways, we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in to our first book. The first one that I read, I do have the physical copy of, and it is Picking Daisies on Sundays by Liana Kinkati. I think that's how you say her last name. She's an indie author. This is my first book that I've ever read by her, and I really loved it. This book is about a girl named Daisy and a guy named Levi, and you only get Daisy's perspective in this book. She's in college right now to be a designer, and then Levi is in college. He's kind of just a very smart, studious, preppy guy. I'm pretty sure he's an English major. He's like an English TA and he teaches like a Jane Austen class. <laughs> Is that not like the cutest thing you've ever heard of? And the way that Liana describes him, like perfect book boyfriend. If you loved Love and Other Words, I feel like you would definitely love this book. Basically the whole premise of this book is they didn't really know each other and then they came to high school, they met. One of them was bad at one class, the other was bad at the other. So they helped each other with those sort of things. And then they ended up trauma bonding over something in their lives that was very similar and traumatic that happened to each of them. So they become really great friends throughout high school. Oh, my hair just looks so I'm literally gonna cut all of my hair off. I'm so sorry guys. It is just bugging me so much. We're just gonna vibe with the hair down. Sorry if it looks frizzy and gross, but this is just what I got to do today. Anyways, back to the book. So they become really great friends throughout high school and then something kind of happens before they go off to college that just separates them for a while. And then towards the end of college, they end up running into each other and things just kind of go from there. There's so many great tropes in this book. We have second chance, friends to lovers, fake dating, which you guys know is my absolute favorite. I enjoyed this book so, so much. I ended up reading it at 4.25. It was just so cute and fun, but also had their like real raw moments and there was some cute little tension in here too, a little bit of unrequited love. And I also just like Daisy as a main character. I resonated with her a lot. Levi was really great too. Again, such a cute book boyfriend. And I don't know, I just really enjoyed this and highly recommend, especially if you're looking for new authors or indie authors to support, you should definitely read this. I just realized I am not in the middle of my bookshelves and that's gonna drive me insane. Fix it. The next book that I read was The Seven and a Half Deaths by Evelyn Hardcastle. This was a book club book. This was actually our second book club book. And we've been reading this since October of 2023. This was supposed to be like our spooky time book. And we've read it in February. Yeah. The biggest reason why that happened is because I think I've explained this before in other vlogs and stuff, but if you didn't know, my book club, we love buddy reading together. We'll literally go to cafes for like hours on end and just read together. We'll read a chapter and then stop and talk about it and all of that kind of stuff. This book though was, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it without giving anything away. In this book, we're following this guy named Aiden Bishop and he's in this like different dimension where he's trying to solve the murder of Evelyn Hardcastle. And each day he's put into a different host that was there for the murder. The entire time he doesn't know who to trust. He doesn't know who he even is. And he's just trying to figure out this murder so he can win his freedom. At first, whenever we were reading this, 
we were loving it. We were super into the story, all the twists and turns, all the things that you just didn't really expect that were going to happen, happen, and you were like, Ugh. like this is crazy. As we kept reading though, things just got less meaningful, I guess. There were so many twists and turns in this book that it was almost like too much. And it was to the point where it just didn't really make sense. And that led to us having all these conspiracy theories of what we thought was going to happen, what the ending could be, all of that kind of stuff. And the ending just did not give. It, it just didn't give at all. All three of us were super disappointed in the ending and we all had different thoughts too of what was going to happen and none of us guessed it and none of us really liked it. And we were just all kind of disappointed, especially because we spent so long reading this book and just kind of like thinking about theories and thinking about the characters and all of that kind of stuff, who we can trust, who we can't, who killed Evelyn Hardcastle, and it, it, no. It just did not end the way that we thought. So with that, I think I'm gonna rate this a three to maybe like a 3.5 star because there were some parts that I really enjoyed. But you know what? I'm just gonna rate it a three. I just don't know if this book was particularly the best thought out. It kind of feels like Stuart Turton wrote this and then he didn't look back to make sure the story was like a cohesive unit and made like a ton of sense. It was also really hard to follow. There were so many different characters. We had to keep going back to like the guest page. There's also a cute little map of Blackheath, which is like the manner that they're at and then this is the invite it has all the people that are in the book on here and we had to keep going back to figure out whose body he was in all of that kind of stuff it was just too much going on at once i don't know I, now i'm thinking like a 2.5 because i don't even know if i would recommend it right now i'm kind of sitting at 2.5 to a 3 and you will see my final rating on goodreads whenever i know my final rating i always put it on goodreads a lot of like the old 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 books that i've read like the first few books that i've read i don't really mess with those like i just leave them because it's been a long time and those just aren't like my book tastes anymore but right now with my recent ones i'm just making sure that the rating i give is like the final rating on it i think it was during the month of february or january but the improbable meet cute series came out on amazon prime this isn't Kindle Unlimited, so you don't have to have a Kindle Unlimited subscription to listen to these. You just go into the Amazon Prime, they're free. You just have to download them to the Kindle app and you can get all of them. I think there's six of them and they're just like short little novellas for like the cutesy Valentine's Day -y era time of the year. And I ended up listening to the one by Ashley Poston who wrote The Dead Romantics and The Seven Year Slip. It's called With Any Luck. And this is great because one, it was free and I love a free book so highly recommend if you don't want to pay for Kindle Unlimited every single month because I kind of go on and off with it just depending on what's on there if I want to read anything that's on there I would definitely check out what they have on Amazon Prime just because they actually had a lot of options and I was kind of shocked so definitely check that out first thing I'm gonna say I don't really rate novellas, but if I were to, I would probably rate this one a little bit higher than some of the other ones I read. This is basically about a girl who her best guy friend is getting married and she's the best man. And her whole thing is that whenever she kisses somebody, they meet their like soulmate the next day. And she's like a super lucky person. Everything normally goes her way besides love. It was pretty cute. Just kind of fun. I ended up listening to this a few days before Valentine's Day and it just got me into the cute little Valentine's Day e spirit. Just a fun little quick novella. Before we get into the next few books, I read them in a video and also I read the first book Picking Daisies on Sundays in my romance reading vlog that I post earlier in February so if you want to know more in-depth thoughts on that book go check that out and then the next three books I read in my blind date with a book video that I also posted in February which you guys really really love let me know if you want me to do that again because I kind of want to shop some more small shops and see what options they kind of have it was such a fun video to film kind of like Christmas every time I opened up a new book but if you don't want the book spoiled for you and you haven't watched that video highly recommend pausing this video coming back for my final reviews of those books after you're done watching it. I'll go ahead and give you a minute to decide what to do. Are you good? You watched the video. Okay, we're good. The first book that I read in that video was A Good Girl's Guide. Sorry. The first book that I read in that video is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is the first in a trilogy. There's a novella at the end in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series by her. This is a YA mystery and I really enjoyed it. It's about a girl named Pippa who, for her senior project, she decides to reopen a cold case about a missing girl in her town. So she's basically investigating the case and you get to do it along with her. And there's so many different forms of writing in here. You get a lot of text messages, you get interviews, you get journal entries, all that kind of stuff because she is doing a project 
project so you basically get to like carry along with her project and also what's going on in the real world and you also get a little bit of a mixture between first person and third person in her journal entries it's first person in the interviews all of that kind of stuff is a little bit different and then whenever it's talking about the stuff that's happening in real life it's third person which I think that's why it took me a little bit of time to get into it normally I find whenever a book is third person I don't connect with the story as much right off the bat it takes me a little bit to get into it just because there's a little bit of a disconnect between the characters and the narrator but this book had very interesting twists and turns and all in all Pippa is trying to prove that the person that everybody in their small town thinks murdered this girl innocent and there were so many things happening part one was a little slow and then we got to part two and three <gasps> There was so much going on. It was very fast paced, very fun. YA thriller and mysteries are just so easy to go through and read and I have just found myself enjoying them so much lately. And I also already bought the rest of the series to finish. I ended up reading this four stars. It was just very good. I liked it a lot and I'm just really excited to continue the rest of the series. Also, if you haven't watched any of my recent videos, these are my bookshelves. I haven't decorated them yet, but I'm actually doing that in a few days. So expect my new bookshelf organization video to be coming out really soon. I'm literally so excited. You guys have no idea. Anyways, next up, this book was also in Blind Date with a book. It's called Just My Type by Fallon Ballard. I ate this book up. Also, we're matching. Oh my god, that's so cute. Anyways, this book is about a girl named Lana, and she is a relationship columnist, kind of giving Andy from How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, and that's actually referenced in this book. So I think it's like loosely based off of that a little bit. And she has been trying to move up at this place forever. She's been working there for a super long time, paid her dues, and she wants to actually get into like real journalism and talk about things that she really wants to talk about other than relationships. Into her first love and ex. Seth, who is also a journalist, and he randomly comes into LA and just got hired by the same website. And they're immediately pit against each other for this job, so it's kind of like a little competition of sorts. We have little rivals to lovers in here, which I absolutely love. And Seth dates, if you know what I mean, around a lot. And Lana is a serial dater. She always has to be around people, always has to be dating somebody. So the whole shtick is, is that Seth has to learn how to basically like settle down and try and find someone that is like long-term material. And Lana needs to learn how to be okay with being single and being by herself. And each week they kind of write about their respective experiences while trying to do those things. And I loved it the tension in this book there are so many good scenes and the plot just kept it going on the entire time i really really love this fallon Ballard's writing so easy to go through so quick so fast paced so fun but there was also a lot of authentic and real moments in here too lana was really funny there were a lot of like cutesy and just like nerdy references there's a lot of marvel references because she loves marvel but it's not like too much to the point where it's like cringy this book was just so cute and there's so many cute little moments in here i ended up reading it a 4.5 I'm also going to start reading Fallon Ballard's Backlist too, just because I enjoyed this one so much. I mean, I literally rated it a 4.5, which is obviously a great rating. And I don't know, I just highly recommend this book. It was so cute, so fun, and I don't hear enough people talking about it. Okay, and then the last book I read in the blind date with the book video was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This book is basically about a girl named Jude and she gets taken from the human world so she's mortal into the fae world to live there for one reason or another and she's there with her two sisters and they've just kind of like grown up there. And it just kind of goes from there. Honestly, this book is kind of no plot, just vibes. There are a lot of things that happen, but it's not, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just not like other fantasy books, I guess. This is a lot more political fantasy than it is romantic or anything like that. There is like one crumb of romance and some people love these books so much. I don't think I fall into that category and that's okay. If these are your favorite books ever, I'm so glad that you love and enjoy them. But I just don't know if these are for me. I've heard that they get better as they go along because there are two other ones and then I think a novella at the end and then there's another book coming out or something or there's like a spinoff or something that just recently came out. And a lot of people are saying that this book gives them the same like whimsical fairiness vibe of the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy, which you guys know I absolutely love. So it's kind of like that with Faye, but I feel like the atmosphere isn't done as well in my opinion and like i was saying so many people love the romance in this book and to me it literally was a bully romance some people argue that it is marketed as an enemies to lovers series but this isn't enemies to lovers like he was just literally bullying her like there honestly is a difference for me and you can be enemies and not like bully each other and like throw that person into a lake to maybe die you know maybe I don't know. Maybe those are a little different for me. I particularly didn't enjoy it and I feel like the 
quote unquote romance portion came absolutely out of nowhere. The plot definitely thickened once I got to about 250 pages in, but it took way too long for things to get interesting. It was just so slow for me. I just didn't really enjoy this, which kind of makes me sad just because I know so many other people enjoy this. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think this book is particularly for me. I think right now I'm sitting anywhere from a 2.5 to a 3. I think like a 2.7. I don't really know. Definitely lower than a 3 on my like rating list. Um, yeah, this definitely wasn't my favorite. If you want to know more of my thoughts, though, go check out the Blend It with a book video. The next two books I listened to on Libby, which if you don't have Libby, you definitely need to do it. It just connects to your library card. And it's just like an e-library, so you check out books that way. And it's so nice for audiobooks. They have so, like, much of a selection. These are part of an interconnected standalone series. And I think all the books are by different authors, or at least the ones that I've read so far are. And they're all princess retellings, which, if you know me... I love like Disney. I'm a Disney adult straight up. It's literally like so fun and Disney movies are just so cute. They just transport me to my childhood. All that being said, these are Disney inspired. The first one that I read was If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy and the second one was by the book by Jasmine Guillory. I think that's how you say your last name and they're a part of the meant to be interconnected standalones. I'll go ahead and start with If the Shoe Fits. This is a Cinderella retelling if you can't tell by the cover and the way that they ended up doing it is by mixing it with The Bachelor. If you also know one thing about me, I love The Bachelor franchise, specifically Bachelor in Paradise, Chef's Kiss, so good. If you're watching this season right now, let me know your thoughts down below. I literally love Joey. Everything about The Bachelor, I just have loved for so, so long, and I stopped watching it for a while, and now I'm back in my Bachelor era, could not be happier. Anyways, the fact that this book had a Bachelor plotline, I have never really seen it done like this. Maybe I just need to read more books like that, but I ate it up. I just enjoyed it so much because of that, and because, I don't know, this book had a lot of great representation too. It is about a plus size female main character, which I really enjoyed, especially being in the Bachelor franchise because I don't think they've ever had anybody over like a size six on The Bachelor. So I thought it was really cool that the representation was there, even if it is just in like a fictional book. But the biggest reason why Cindy goes on the show is because she just finished design school and she loves shoes and she's just been designing shoes for a really long time. So she wants to promote her shoes and she's not really sure what she wants to do after college. So she figured this is a way that she could do it because like everybody's dressing up. Up and stuff and her stepmom is actually one of the biggest like producers of the show so she goes on the show and she ends up meeting the bachelor and things go great for her let's just say that i love this book i absolutely ate it up if you love the bachelor you have to read it it was just so cute the writing was really great too i want to read more of this author's writing julie murphy i listened to this i think it was like the last 75 percent in a cafe because i was just there like all day doing work and stuff like that so if i was like planning or like writing stuff on my computer anything like that if i was doing anything that wasn't reading or editing i was listening to this audiobook and i finished it so quick just because i was so into the story it was so cute so fun i rated this a 4.5 and i just loved it it was so cute and then by the book was a beauty in the Beast retelling. I didn't like this one as much as the Cinderella retelling, but it was still really fun and cute. It's basically about a girl named Izzy who she is a publicist assistant. And the biggest problem with her job right now is she is trying to get this guy to write a memoir. And this guy, Bo, has not sent anything in and the deadlines are like vastly approaching so they end up hunting him down and going to talk to him in person and he is kind of like a little grumpy and they don't really get along at first but it ends up being that she ends up staying at his house to help him finish the book and there are a lot of cute little beauty and the beast elements in there too just a few nods to the movie and i thought that was really cute and precious and their story was really cute and fun i didn't find myself enjoying this one as much i just found it a little bit repetitive and i feel like there wasn't as much plot going on but i ended up rating it like a 3.5 3.75 around there of the final rating up here but there are a lot of cute moments in it that like i'm reminiscing on right now as i'm talking about it it was just really cute and fun and i'm excited to continue this series all of them are in my library on libby and christina lawrence actually coming out with a book in the series soon so i'm really excited about that one because it's a rapunzel retelling and then after that I read Normal People by Sally Rooney. This is another controversial one, kind of like The Cruel Prince. This book is about Marianne and Connell. You get both of their perspectives through third person omniscient and they know each other from high school and they've never truly been in a relationship, but they've been doing the things that involve people. With... <sighs> My battery's dying. Hold up guys. Okay, sorry about that. I had to take a brief hiatus because I had to have my camera battery charged. But I had a little ice cream sandwich and I am back 
ready to go. I was talking about normal people. It's basically about two people who are just super normal. They go through a lot of normal things. You see them in high school, you see them in college, you see how their relationship changes and how they just keep coming back together and back to each other. I was really enjoying the first half of this book and then something happened and it just kind of like turned me off completely. I would also definitely check the trigger warnings on this too and I don't know, I enjoyed Sally Rooney's writing too. She doesn't use quotations by the way so if you think that'll bother you, be careful going into this but it honestly didn't bother me at all. I didn't really notice it and I found it like very easy to follow even without the quotations. Quotations. Um, I think that there were just a few things on this book that I wished didn't need to happen a certain way. The ending was heartbreaking. And for that, I'm gonna rate it a four star. I enjoyed it. I did feel connected to the characters, but they weren't like my favorite characters ever. But it was also just such a realistic representation of like relationships whenever you're young. And it was just really interesting. It was a good, quick, fast-paced read too, and I felt pretty enthralled by the story. So I definitely recommend it. It's just not like my favorite book ever. I definitely want to read more books by Sally Rooney though. Okay, and then the last book that I read in the month of February was one that I was really excited about. It was a new release, and that is Bride by Miss Allie Hazelwood. I don't know if I said this in a video or not, but at first I thought this was a like fantasy romance, a romantic-y type moment, and it was her first venture into that. But it's actually just like a romance book but it's a paranormal romance book about a vampire and a werewolf and it's marriage and convenience so they're forced to get married in order for their people to have like an alliance and honestly there's a lot of talk about politics in this book and there's also like a random mystery element too and my problem was is that we focused a lot on world building for it just to be like a plain romance and there were a lot of things that were said that just like didn't really need to be said or explained and when the romance came in it just kind of came out of nowhere like I knew it was gonna happen obviously because it is like a paranormal romance but at the same time like there was no like tensiony buildup there was like one or two scenes and then it was just like I like you love yeah. Like, no, I need a little bit more of that. Give me more of that. And I don't know, the twist at the end was kind of cool, kind of interesting, but I just don't think I like this book as much. There's also just like a random thing that happened that kind of like icked me out and made me feel just mm, like icky. Icky is the best way to explain it. I did love. Did I just speak English? I think I was trying to say, describe it and explain it at the same time. You got what I meant. We're good. I do have to say though, low the werewolf in this the husband everything it was just very cute even though that the relationship came out of nowhere he just had a lot of moments that kind of got me like oh okay okay look, okay i think for that i'm gonna rate this four as well a four or 3.75 somewhere around there final rating will be up here it's just not my favorite ally hazelwood book and i feel like this was almost not finished i think somebody needed to go back through and edit it a few more times over not that there were like spelling errors or anything like that there were just some things in here that didn't need to be in there or i don't know it just felt really dragged out for me for some odd reason these are all the books that i read in the month of february let me know if you've read any of these books and if you have any thoughts on them or if you have any other books that you want me to read any video ideas anything like that leave it in the comments down below and we can chat down there. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, all of those YouTube things, and go ahead and comment the palm tree emoji if you stayed to the end of this video so I know who the real ones are. If you want to keep up with more of my day-to-day -day life, you can go ahead and follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Goodreads. I post on all of there a lot, specifically Goodreads, if you want to keep up with what I'm reading at the moment. And yeah, I think that's it. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys! Mm -hmm.